bet that I lost her. <clears throat> Thank you, Chani, for the, uh, for the introduction. Okay, um, the benefit of being the last speaker is the benefit of hearing what everyone has to say and looking at the angles from which they attacked or dealt or confronted this, this intangible and, and weird issue, I have to say. The, the, is there a Jewish dimension to the uh, peace process? And everyone was speaking about the Jewish dimension of peace. Now, I, I think I would, I, I don't think I'd be, uh, I'd be going on a limb if I'd say that I'm going to be speaking here for the next six minutes as probably the only one on this panel who's fundamentally secular. And, and I say this not to be the odd man out, but I say this to serve the, uh, uh, the, the two or three arguments or points um, that I wish to make. The state of Israel is a state. First and foremost, a state by definition is a legal entity, a political entity, and a secular institution. Uruguay and Japan and Italy and Israel are states. They are not manifestations of God will. They are not manifestations of religion. They are not expressions of religious uh, um, aspirations. There is an element to it, and I'm being, I'm being blunt purposely here. I know what I'm saying uh, uh, is, is not clear cut. However, a state has a foreign policy, and, uh, and part of Israel's foreign and defense policy is a peace process. And that peace process has to be dealt with by the state through the organs, the mechanisms, the know-how, the, um, the processes and the institutions that a state has at its disposal. The state of Israel is a continuum of Jewish history, yes. It is also not a Jewish state. It is the state of the Jews. And in this respect, what uh, decisions that are made in Israel, by Israel, affect Diaspora Jews in general, American Jews in particular. I'll get to that. That would be my third point. But if David Ben-Gurion, in 1947, on the eve of UN General Assembly Resolution 181, a so-called partition plan, partition proposal, had David Ben-Gurion said, this does not satisfy my civilizational and religious aspirations, I do not control the Holy Basin. I do not control the wall. I cannot get to the tomb of Rachel. Then we wouldn't have a state of Israel. He was a realist. He was secular. He was a statesman. And he made decisions, all of which originate from and emanate from Jewish heritage, none of which is driven by or underlined by any, anything that is religious. Now. Second point is, I take issue, and I know none of the speakers before me meant it that way, but for the sake of conversation, I will pretend as if uh, that Judaism is a religion. Uh, Judaism is much more than a religion, which is why the issue of the Jewish dimension of peace and the Jewish dimension of the peace process has to transcend theology and issues of religion. No disrespect to anyone here. Judaism is a civilization. First and foremost, and if, if you wish to take the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which I don't think can be solved easily, which I don't subscribe to left-wing theology about just build a Palestinian state and they will come, and I don't subscribe to right-wing theology saying that, the, by theology I mean political theology, even, uh, to right-wing orthodoxy, according to which the status quo is some aftershave that you splash on your face in the morning and it just smells great and you can go on an entire lifetime with the status quo. My, my point is a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has to come from a decision that is made on rational, realistic, and realpolitik calculations, not religious and not civilizational. Otherwise, Ben-Gurion would not have accepted partition in 1947. Otherwise, we could never give up anything that has historical, ancestral, archaeological, religious, and civilizational import and we, and importance and, signif <clears throat> I'm sorry, and significance, and we have already. As for the issue itself, uh, the question itself, Remy, if, if Jews are to be consulted, diaspora Jews, you mentioned Ron Lauder, fine, let's use his name, 
Ron Lauder wants to be consulted on concessions in Jerusalem. Fine. Um, should Ron Lauder be consulted on the eve of the Six Day War and whether it's a good idea to engage in that war? Should Ron Lauder be, uh, uh, Ron Lauder as, as uh, uh, the epitome of, of, of world jury? Uh, it, it, this is a very complex question, and, and I have to say that uh, being the state of the, Jew, of the Jews has a responsibility, and how Israel behaves and how Israel conducts itself definitely has a bearing on the lives of Jews. And you know, Chemi, you began your presentation at the uh, outset of this session by saying that we usually dismiss these issues by saying, well, you can't have a voice because you don't go in the army which is silly, I agree. However, um, on, 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 the same, on the same token, um, anything that you do that affects Jews throughout the world um, has an importance in terms of how you perceive yourself as a Jewish state or as the state um, of the Jews. My, my point in the last 30 seconds that I have, my, my concluding point is as follows. If I had to give you a simple blunt, clear-cut, unequivocal answer. Is there a Jewish dimension to the peace process? My answer is no, there isn't. There is no such thing. You're interested, we want your opinion, you're free to express it. In, in this day and age of, of communications and the relationship that has developed and evolved between Israel and diaspora Jews in the last six decades is such that to even claim that Jews do not have a voice is silly. They do have a voice. I, I, I worked, as Chemi said, for four foreign ministers and one prime minister. It w wasn't because I was that good, it's because they came to change so, so uh, uh, quickly. Uh, I don't recall one time that any of them went to New York, New York being the, 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 the other center of Jewish life and Jewish civilization. Uh, I don't recall one visit by any of these gentlemen, and I'm talking about people diver as diverse as David Levy and Shimon Peres, Ehud Barak and Shlomo Benami, without meeting at least one, usually three or four different forms of American Jewry. Same goes for Britain, same goes for Canada, same goes for Argentina, same goes for France. I, I just use uh, um, the four or five centers of Jewish uh, uh, diaspora. Uh, yeah, there is a voice. Yes, that voice is usually expressed. No, I do not think that in terms of the peace process there is a peculiar, a unique voice because the peace process is a secular political, political I'm sorry, process that has to be conducted by a secular state. The fact that this state is a Jewish state does not mean that as a state it is religious. It is not. I don't know of even Iran, which uh, uh, prides itself uh, calling it as an Islamic Republic, conducts its affairs of the state in, in a very traditional secular, by secular incidentally, and I'll conclude with this, by secular, I do not necessarily mean anti-religious. By secular, I mean non-religious. Even Iran conducts its foreign policy in a non-religious uh, way. So my answer to the simple question posed by the title of this session is no, there is no Jewish dimension to the peace process. There is a Jewish dimension that all the, uh, the other speakers spoke about beautifully to the, to the issue of peace, but there is no dimension, no Jewish added dimension to the peace process. Thank you. Now, um, I'd like to make one final short round among all of us. Um, I'll start with Falon at the end. Um, if you could relate to the relatively recent demand um, posed by Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, as a sort of prerequisite um, to a peace agreement, sometimes uh, it's even mentioned as a prerequisite to peace talks that the Palestinians recognize Israel as a Jewish state. Um, I heard from you, Alan, that you speak of Israel as a state of the Jews, so uh, I would assume that you do not support this. No, I do. Um, it, it's, it's a complex... We have a minute each. Okay, well, a minute each, I hope to use less. Um, I. First of all, Israel already has been recognized as a Jewish state by Security Council Resolution 181 in 1947. Now, that may not be enough, and I agree with Mr. Netanyahu that it is not enough. 
On, on the subs and incidentally, in the Balfour Declaration of 1917, which at least di from a diplomatic historical point of view is the foundations of, of Zionist diplomacy, part of the foundations of Zionist diplomacy, calls of the homeland for the Jewish people. It does not talk about uh, a state of Israel or a state of Judea. It says a homeland for the Jews. Uh, I intellectually sympathize with Netanyahu's demand 100%. However, that said, I'll make two short comments. One is, as a Zionist, I, I, I feel somewhat insulted by this uh, when, it, when it is presented as a demand. I don't need the reaffirmations of Palestinians or Brazilians for my Jewishness, for the identity of my country, for how I choose to define myself. I do not need their reaffirmation. I don't need their, I, I, I'm not impressed by their rejection. I'm not frightened by their refusal to do so. And I don't think uh, we will be uh, um, happily, living happily ever after if they do. The second, uh, the second remark, Remy, is, the second comment is, turning this into a prerequisite uh, for a peace process with which I have my own doubt, uh, about which I have my own doubts and with which I think there, are a multitude of, there is a multitude of problems is silly diplomacy because it's a non-starter and he knew it. And which is why, while I intellectually agree with him, I question uh, uh, the, the, uh, 